We are so excited today. We are here with Buck Wise. He is our business consultant here at Zudelio, and he's going to be dropping some good nuggets. So listen up. Well, Buck is actually so much more than just a business consultant. I don't want to steal like the thunder of your resume. Steal so why don't it, you just not lay it on us? Well, I, okay. So the biggest one is the CMO for Grant Cardone, like yeah. right in the business industry. I mean, that's like, I actually want to dive into that in a second. Like how in the world did you even get that job like, sure, you know, sure. in the first yeah. place? It's, you know, it's, it's funny because Grant ha doesn't actually believe in having a CMO. So I was the CMO for his business development company, mm. which is Cardone Ventures, okay. which is helping small to medium sized businesses grow. And so Cardone Ventures is where I was the CMO. And it's a really crazy story how I got there. At the time I was, I was really, first of all, thank you for having yes, me on. Yes, we're so uh, excited. This is all the pleasantries. Real estate Back to agents, the fun stuff. if you're watching right now, I promise you're not gonna get an entire digression of my LinkedIn history. We're gonna give you some value here today. So I hope if you're a real estate agent and you watch this every week, you know that we're gonna be talking about all those things to help you grow. But to give you context to sort of my background is, uh, I was working at the world's largest agency. It's called WPP. There are thousands and thousands of employees around the world. I worked with big brands like Starbucks and Nike and Google. And uh, awesome. on the side, my first love, I worked for iHeartRadio for 15 years. So on the side, once you start radio, it's like riding a bike. You never really stop and it's mm. easy to keep going. So I was doing a syndicated radio program on the side while I worked as the SVP of innovation and business development for WPP. And I reached out to Elena Cardone for an interview. That was mm. the very first contact <laughs> that I made. And from Elena Cardone, she introduced me. That's a pretty cool me. contact, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it, it was pretty awesome. I was watching her channel and she, she was following these other people that were starting a business development company with Grant. And that's how I got all mm. connected with them. And so they brought me in to start managing their marketing and sales. And so I oversaw marketing and sales for Cardone Ventures for three years. And for, con I, for context, how long ago was that? That was about seven months ago. Yeah, so, uh, so but recent. three years. Three, it was recent that you- Somewhat recent, yeah. yeah, but it was it was three years long. And I always say the time that I spent in corporate and you know in media, NBC, CBS, iHeart, the time I spent there, um, I learned so much more in three years from my mentors on the Cardone side than I ever learned in corporate marketing. Mm. Corporate marketing gave me a lot of context to big mm -hmm. billion dollar brands. Yeah. But I feel like where my purpose lies and where I'm really most happy is helping the individual agent or the small real estate company mm. blow it up and grow. Love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so much more fun to go through those breakpoints and thresholds together yeah. than just helping a company that's already fat and happy turn their ship to one more <laughs> billion dollars. You know? I mean, it is fun and you do get a good experience. Like I worked on pumpkin spice latte for yeah. two years I and I got to go on photo shoots where you're like, perfecting the foam on the top of the cup for $20,000 yeah. a day shoot. <laughs> wow. You know, so like you get that. Using that. soap. Yeah, well actually it's ice. <laughs> oh. A lot of people don't realize this. Any hot drink that you see in a Starbucks ad, what they do is they fill it with ice. Even if it's a clear cup, they fill it with ice and they do the whipped cream because the whipped cream cannot sit for more than three minutes. Mm. Ah. If it does, it loses its shape and volume. And so they have to restart from scratch. So they do ice and then they actually, it's called in post, they put the drink, they superimpose the drink in the cup in post. Nice. So they get that whipped cream shop first, which is just crazy. Well, but, hey. the, anyway, more, so, the more you know. Well, you get context, you know? <laughs> yeah. You get context of like, you know, what you need today to grow is not what you're going to need tomorrow to grow. So Interesting, yes. And so yeah, if you have that perspective of like, what is the challenge? Because, you know, they always say, your challenges your, are not big enough. You're never gonna get rid of your problems. Everybody's like, how do I just solve everything so I can have a healthy business? The idea is you're always gonna have a problem. Mm -hmm. How do you want to look for bigger problems in Absolutely. the business? So what are those bigger problems that I should be looking for? I get to be able to have that context now. Like I know technology is gonna be one of your big issues. Yep. I know that growth with your employees is gonna be an issue. Once you do figure out how to find good talent and attract good talent, then the next question is, how do you keep them consistent to the values that you guys create? Mm -hmm. Because I know you, you you were a small team at one point, and now yep. you've grown, you're in this yep. beautiful office, you have your own podcast studio. So it's like, when she can't be here every day or you're not involved yep. every day, how do you keep your marketing consistent? How do you keep the voice and tone as 
new clients are connecting with employees, how do you make sure that they're embodying what the brand is supposed to be? And so you, you learn all of those elements, which were super helpful for me. Yeah. And, and those it. are big challenges. And those are some of the things that you have been helping us with over the past couple months. Yes, so we're yes. just we're really blessed to be working with Buck. And we know that there is so much valuable content that you can deliver to our listeners and, and viewers, which are primarily residential real estate agents. Yes. And so Elliot and I were kind of game planning before the podcast. Let's and we we want to get really tactical. Mm. We want to give everybody listening just right yes, it. yeah. Let's do it. So, we kind of our our first thought was is, you know, it seems like you've got the agents that are kind of like eh, middle producers, maybe they do like 20 deals a year, yeah. right? And we want to know kind of like what your advice would be for them. Yeah. And then we'd also want to take it up a, a notch. So what would your advice be to the person that's kind of crushing it, that's yeah. looking to expand? Because I know like, you know, Buck works with like Ryan Serhant. And sure. I know that you're also on that like mega, mega producer side as well. Yeah. So let's start with like kind of the average producer. And yeah. what would your advice be to them? Sure. So. Um Let's see, so many different places we could go here. It just depends on the challenge that they're having. First of all, I wanna say congratulations to you guys because you have one of the best challenges ever, which is you're growing so rapidly <laughs> that like you're just trying to, you're trying to organize it as fast as possible so yes. that you work smarter, not harder. Absolutely. Um, and so the opportunity is there. And if you've never dug into what Zudilio can do for you as a real estate agent, this is unsolicited. This is not hashtag sponsored. <laughs> this is me saying you need this arsenal in your tool belt. Trust me, if you've never dug in, there's going to be a link, whether you're on YouTube or Instagram, you should click it. If you're editing this right now as part of the Zudilio internal team, this is your highlight clip right here. <laughs> Click the link. Okay, that's it. Um, but what, what I would say is like small real estate agents that are first getting started, it is 100% a mindset shift that you are a business owner. Mm because they come from usually a nine to five. Mm. I mean, this was part of my wife's story. She did corporate real estate and she was doing it nine to five behind a desk. And then you join a brokerage. And mm -hmm. when you join that brokerage, you're just conditioned mm. to think, this is my next job. You're conditioned to think, I show up, I have a leader, even though that leader is, you know, 1099ing or either, you know, you're not an actual employee right. of the brokerage. Right. And so the first shift is, you are the only one responsible for your growth. Like you have to be thinking about what do I need to do from a foundational piece to set up a business because you are now a business owner. Yep. Like, do you have an S Corp, an LLC? Have you thought about what your growth trajectory looks like? Have you created not a personal <laughs> goal, but have you created a corporate goal? Have you created a, 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 some sort of accountability and to where you're at and where you want to go? What business intelligence have you started to learn? What professional development have you taken on business to understand business? You know, I think a lot of times real estate gets a bad rap for new agents because new agents see it as an escape from a reality they don't like, <laughs> right? They're like, yeah. I hate my boss, this job sucks, I'm gonna be an agent. Yep. And if you've ever been a customer on the other side of that agent, you know how oh. bad it is because they're just, they, they're not informed, they're not educated, they don't have a clear structure, process, or great communication. Totally. This is why real estate They don't know what they don't know. They get a bad rap. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. 100%. Horrible communicators. And so agents get that bad rap. The good ones, the ones that separate themselves are the ones that understand that they are a business entity and they need to run it like a business entity. The other thing I would say technically, because you said you wanted to get into tactic. I do, yes. yes. Is action will outperform performance and execution any day. The level of action that you take. I ask this simple Massive question. action. Hmm. Massive action. I ask this simple question every day. Whether you're brand new or a high performing agent, ask yourself this question right now. How many new people did I talk to today mm. that I did not talk to yesterday? Answer it honestly. Have some self-reflection and say, how many new people did I talk to today that I did not talk to yesterday? If it's one or zero or maybe two, you need to think about your level of action that you're taking to meet new people because that's any that's not real estate, that's any business. Mm -hmm. Businesses grow by your ability to make connections with new people. And here's what I know, new agents, they don't have a million dollar budget. Mm -hmm. They're not spending right. ads to get in front right. of thousands of people, right? And, and, and by the way, every new agent, they think that's the strategy. I just wish I could afford 
10 grand in ads. Yeah, it's a sum of day. Uh, yeah. Uh, someday, it's, someday. It, yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like, that's not, that's, trust me, that's not the way it works. That's not what's going to be, there's no golden key to getting success. That would crush them. I can, I can say that recently uh, we started spending uh, six figures in ads and we've never done that before. Yeah, yep. And I can tell you that it has crushed us yeah. operationally, our sales team. And, you know, you always think you want more and then you get more and you're just like, whoa, yeah. like drinking from the fire hose. Yeah. You will know what that feels like when you start to spend. Well, that even kind just of the money. sourcing, where is it coming from? What's the you know the the, yeah. the, the conversion cycle? It would crush you know, right? there's, new there's agents. There's so many attention yes. to detail things that have to come mm -hmm. into play mm -hmm. because you have to you have to follow the money, right? But and you're, that's exactly it. I love what Buck's saying though. So you're new in real estate and you set out and you've really got to put that foundation in place to build that business. Think of it like a That's business. Right. And then the second thing is just get out there and find people. Yes. You got to make connections. Now there's a lot of ways to do that, right? There's door knocking, there's yep. going to the farmer's market. There's, you know, there's um, texting your friends and family, which is where every new agent always finds their first deal. Right. Yep. They're just like, hey, I'm an agent. And it's like Chris from high school. It's like, <laughs> oh, I need a house. Yep. Right. And you're People like, that know you like you trust you. Right. Nailed That's it. Right. That's exactly it. We call that the power base. And so there's no question hmm. you're going to make connections. The stats sound like this, not to startle anyone, but the stats sound like this. 90 percent of new agents don't make it. 90 percent of new agents that yep. on average in markets across America don't make it long term. Right. And we know this, the first deal for most new agents don't happen for four to six months. Right. I'm going to quit my job. I hope you're ready. Four to six months, your deal ain't coming. It's right? true. Um, and so you have to think about those statistics. You have to be really strategic about your approach and be really, really disciplined about what you're doing and how you're doing it. Hmm. Okay, now share with us, because yes. I know you have plenty of thoughts on this. Let's hear it, I can't wait. <laughs> what should these agents be doing with their social media? Yes. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Social media, 50 TikTok dances a day. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's how you Just create dance all day, success. TikTok. <laughs> I okay. want to see. There you have it, folks. The Macarena. What are we doing on TikTok? The pointing the ones. Market. That's my favorite. I think it's the pointing ones. Point to the... At the text. 50 of these a day and you are golden. That's it. That's all you have to do. Uh, the, the, you know, the question is this. Who are we talking to? Now mm. we know we need to meet people. But the question is, who do we need to meet? And Let's if we understand audience. who we need to meet, if we understand the audience, if we understand, are we going luxury? Very hard for somebody new because you need a lot of credibility in luxury. Yep. But are we going, you know, are we going empty nesters? Are we going college? Are we going rentals? Are we going, you know, uh, first time home buyers, which is usually a really good safe persona for anyone breaking yep. into real yep. estate. They don't know and you don't know. So you have enough, <laughs> you have enough credibility to say, I know more than you Two do. Two I don't knows make a right. <laughs> that's exactly it. I know enough, you know, I know enough. Oh my I know, God, that's look, so funny. I passed a test. You didn't trust me. Okay. That's usually why first time home buyers are like, yeah, let's go for it. So, so you got to think about who you're targeting. Once you know who you're targeting, it tells you where do I spend my most most of my time? Hmm. Where should I be? New home buyers, TikTok, absolutely. Luxury, TikTok, probably not. I'm not saying there isn't luxury on TikTok. I'm just saying you're gonna over index with a younger audience with people searching and new and different innovative ways and TikTok's one of those. TikTok's becoming an amazing search engine, by the way. Hmm. YouTube is another great platform, but you gotta be yep. thinking about who am I targeting? And then once you're on that platform, you have to think about how do you separate yourself? So now that you're on the platform and you know they're there and you're there, the question is how do I showcase that I'm different from the thousands of other real estate agents that are, do by the way, do it, please don't do this if you're a real estate agent. I know you were probably gonna ask me this question anyway. <laughs> yes, like okay. what's the thing that drives you most yes. nuts on social? Yes. I'll give you one now. Okay. I have a yeah. whole list of things that drive me nuts. Real estate agents are notorious for your crappy music with no story, no narration, showing me that damn house pan. And here's the living room. Yeah. And here's the kitchen. <laughs> and here's outside. It's like boom, 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 <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Right? It's like if we see a nut, like, wow, you're really selling it to me. Yeah. You know, tell, look, show your face. We know there's a 70% increase in conversion when somebody makes eye to eye contact. 
give me your face. And There's a nugget me. for you. There's one for you. Don't be afraid of the camera. That's the first thing is get over the fear of showing yourself. Tell me a story, make a real connection. So I would say that would be my best tip is once you're online, once you're in social, learn to tell stories. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be the key. So let's go through that simply, right? Because I see you do that all the time. Mm -hmm. I see Jay do that actually on our team a lot. He does a great job of actually putting his face in the shot, even though he's talking about like when he'll narrate a property of, of, of you know, one that, um, that we're a part of. And so where he's talking about the kitchen, the living room, you know, all those types of things yeah. where the tactically they have the camera in their face, they're mm -hmm. talking to it while he's pointing certain things out, right? Yes, so like yes. they think that that's he's such a, a good pro tip right there. He's making a human connection. That's Love it. exactly right, yeah. That's the key, you know, the idea is that people will respond and make connections with you much faster when they can see and hear you. When you're just showing bland video of a house, I mean, you know, I'm not saying that can't work, but your percentage drops immensely when you don't sell the vision and inspiration. Sometimes the client needs you yep. to give them inspiration. Yep. Well, and just even think about like the way that we all consume yeah. technology, right? Like a lot of times it's just an, a boring pan, you next, next, yeah. tap, 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 right? Yeah. You, to, to move it along. Well, we know the average time that any user spends on any platform per asset, per picture, per video is two seconds. Hmm. So if you're watching this right now or listening to this, take your finger on your phone and swipe up every two seconds. Ready, do it with me. One, One. two. One, two, one, two, one, two. That is the average amount of time somebody spends before they make a decision. I'm interested in this, I'm not. One, two, oh, I'm interested in this. So the question is in the first two seconds, how are you ca capturing impact of the person on the other side? The more you know them, the easier it is for you to do that. So if I say, hey, increase your leads, if you're brand new in real estate and you wanna increase your leads, here's three ways to do it, you're immediately in if you're a new agent. Now, if I said, hey, you're a luxury agent and you're trying to break into a new zip code, here's two things you can do immediately to break into that new zip code. Then I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack the luxury agent, right? Or I know luxury agents, their biggest challenge is the owners of the luxury house over inflating the price point of the mm. home because they think they know mm. better, right? Yep. So like maybe it's, hey, here's how to negotiate better with your client if you're in the luxury space. So like me knowing that value proposition of a luxury agent helps me make a connection faster with them because they say, wow, that, that does happen to me and I do hate when that happens. This guy must know something. It adds credibility to me because I know them so well. Same way you as an agent need to think about the biggest challenges. So if you're thinking, let's go back to the example of like new home buyer. Right? It's like, hey, I know you are so excited to get into your first new home, but there are three things you can do before you even start to search. They're gonna help you narrow down what your actual opportunity is before you even go into it. Like knowing whatever, but, be, but even get more granular than that. Like if you're in a market and you know like this is the hot trendy area, it's like how, you're a new homeowner and you wanna get into this trendy area, but you're competing against cash offers. Here's two strategies you could use to get into yeah. X area. Like the the more granular you can go, the more conversion you're gonna get. The broader you go, hi, I have a real estate agent, I can help you buy or sell a home. Hear how broad that is? The broader you go, the less traction, the less, the less engagement, the less conversion that you're gonna get. So focus and niche. That's it. I love it. Yeah, and I, that's, that's like actually like super simple, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things I wanna sh I share that I just keep hearing you say, and it, it, it it's, delivered a little bit different, but we are, I was at um, a conference last week, uh, a Tom Ferry event. And then what he was talking about is when you implement a new habit, right? If you implement one new habit at a time, you have a chance of success 85% of the time. Yeah. If it's two habits at the same time, 40% chance, yeah. three habits, 3% chance. Yeah. Right. So it's just because you're diluting your, your, it, it, your, your, your efforts. And yeah, your, yeah, your, a confused mind does nothing. Right. Yeah. So it's just like I'm what I'm hearing you say in this is if they get crystal clear on what they want to have yeah. or deliver. Right. Yeah. Like there may be an area of expertise. Yeah. Smash it with that in a repetitive fashion. That's put the exactly camera in their right. face. Yeah. And talk about it so that they are known as the, the, the you know, the the authoritative figure yeah. in that. The fastest way for me to know that an entrepreneur or anyone in business doesn't know what they're doing is by how broad their content goes. Mm. What that tells me is mm. they're insecure. Mm. I call that's it strong. the wide net strategy. Okay, that's so interesting. They're, throwing out, they're okay. throwing out the wide net. They're mm -hmm. like, 
hey, maybe you're going through a divorce or it's a new home buyer, your luxury, or maybe you want to buy or sell or invest. Uh, like, I don't want to miss anyone. <laughs> and by doing that, you're talking to nobody. Mm. Ooh, that's strong. Because, yes, it is. Because you're going so wide. So I would say that would be, if you're going through your own social mm -hmm. and you're watching people, you'll know that's your competition that you can beat because they don't know that yet, right? That's interesting. How do you, okay, so this is, we're still talking about, you know, hey, you're an agent, you're maybe just starting out, maybe you're doing like 20 deals a year. Yeah. And so we're still kind of talking about that lower producer. Mm -hmm. um, how do you get there? How do you, like, what would your advice be to the agent that's like, yeah, I definitely am broad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe that's yeah, how do you I'm a pivot, little insecure. Right? Well, yeah. How yeah. do you, how would you help that agent kind of narrow their focus and sure. really dial in? And this is what I do every day. I help real estate agents, high performing teams figure this out. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first things I would question for you to do is go look at your results. Go look at your experience. Go look at your past transactions. And I want you to study them. I want you to tell me because there's what you have and what you want, mm -hmm. okay? So it's easier to replicate what you already have. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you can't transition into a different persona, target, or market. Doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that if we're looking at sustainable growth, then we need to keep doing what's working for us, but do it better. Amplify. So let's study the past transactions. What were the last five fan, uh, uh, five transactions? Who were they? Male, female, families, kids, no kids, rental, buy. What like what, what trend line can you create? And what I want to do is perfect those experiences. I want to ask questions. I want to collect data. And I want to learn, what do I know about these guys that worked? Where did I find them? Where did they find me? Oh, it's weird. The last three out of five, I all found at church. Guess where we're going, right? Guess where we're, we're spending money. Yeah, that's right. We're going to praise Jesus together, Re right? Yeah, repeat. Hallelujah. We're going to invest in the next church function. We're going to sponsor. We're going to donate to it. We're going to double down on that. I'm using that as a weird example. Maybe that's not where you get your leads. Maybe it was Instagram. If it's Instagram, we're going to double down on the consistency. We're gonna push harder on the Reels algorithm. We're gonna go live twice a day. It's that level of effort and output. But here's the good news. You already know what worked. So now we're just gonna perfect it. We're gonna polish it. We're gonna optimize it. We're gonna study why it worked. I say this all the time and sometimes it makes business owners uncomfortable mm. when I say this, especially for you guys because you're at this <laughs> high performing level as a corporation, right? But I would rather you fail just a little bit. I know that's hard to hear. I'd rather you fail just a little bit, but know exactly why you did, rather than succeed a little bit and have no clue how to repeat the success. Because <laughs> that's called shotgun strategy. That's mm -hmm. called, like I did this thing and I did a bunch of things and I did radio TV and I put an ad up and people just came in and I closed like more deals than ever. How'd you do it? I don't know, I just did all the things, right? Like that, I can't scale You gotta that. source it, you gotta Yeah, I can't money. scale that. I don't know how to replicate that. I don't know how to <laughs> optimize that. So, so you failing and going, but I spent this much, I had this many calls, I converted this many deals, like being able to track that at a granular level, I can say, let's shift this, let's try this, let's A-B test this, let's optimize and automate this. And at least we know where we went wrong and we know where to shift and make new investments in new spaces. Mm. So I, th I feel like that advice kind of, it works well for that, that newer agent, that lower producing agent, and it also works well for the, the team. It definitely it, especially does. the team. Or on a different the end of, level. Yeah, well, and let's individual. be real here. How many times, like even for you and I, Kayla, how many times have you and I worked with a team or a brokerage or whatever else and we start like, getting more consulted with them. Yeah. And I ask them about like their CRM and some of the strategies and all the things that, yeah. that we have to dive, you know, dive through. They don't have any clue on any of it. No. <laughs> no, and I'm just like, whoa, it's, it's, some it's, of them it's, do. it's, oh, so, I would say the vast majority have a good general understanding, but some yeah. that are pretty successful. Right. Yeah. They right. just, they don't know. And, and, I'm just, and those are the most dangerous ones. <laughs> and I need them. I why, need do you mean, why, do you, why do you say dangerous? They're dangerous because they dangerous. don't, they lack self-awareness. Yes. They lack it big time because they've created enough success mm -hmm. that they believe they know what they're doing. Mm. And usually what I find, not all the time, so I'm not pointing fingers at anyone, but is not only do they not have the self-awareness, 
they aren't usually really hungry for more either. Ooh. Right? Yeah, they're kind of so, casual. And, so, and by the way, that's not my client. Like the first thing is, do you want to grow? How big do you want to be? Yep. And if that's you, I'll, even if you lack a little self-awareness, we'll work on that. Like I'm going to give you education that's going to let you see a bigger picture. But usually when somebody's created a million dollar GCI and mm -hmm. they've been in the business 15, 20 years and they're like, don't need that CRM, all that nurtured text message, voicemail, drop all that stuff. No, yeah. you're good. I don't need <laughs> it. They're in spreadsheets. They're happy with it, right? Um, you can create a level of success. I call it ground and pound. Just grind it out. That's called working harder, by the way, not smarter. So yeah. the question is what you did, congratulations. You did a million dollars GCI. You've been in the business 15 to 25 years. Congratulations. You did something that truly shows us, one, you care. Two, you have a purpose. Three, you understand the consumer. You've done it long enough. You have the experience. Congratulations. How does $3 million in GCI sound? And while you're on a beach, not in the market, mm. how does that sound? If that sounds better to you, let's build out an infrastructure. Yep. Let's build out a foundation that allows you to scale outside of your, your you having to be responsible and in the business. And so that's the conversation I have with somebody that has that. They either want it or like, no, nope, I'm good. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. It's been working. I don't want to change things up. Technology scares me. I don't like to log into those things. It's too confusing. People know me and my phone has 3000 contacts in it. They call me. I don't need that. And so that it, I say that the self-awareness is the first piece that's the, that's the most dangerous for them. The second is they're not diversified in their approach. And so when you only count on, th so most of those agents, mm -hmm. not first of all, most all agents, but those specifically, 90 to 99% of their lead source, referral. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. right? All right. referral. Mm -hmm. The day Russia goes to war, interest rates go up, COVID 9.0 hits, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. And referrals slow down. But the kid down the street that's been banging YouTube for six months, doing yep. six videos yep. a week, all of a sudden he's got leads coming in from other yep. markets because people are moving because of regulations in other states. Yep. And you're like, why am I not getting calls from California to move here? Right. Well, because you played the referral game and you're happy with your spreadsheet. Yep. You know, so that's the most dangerous thing to them <laughs> yeah. is the market's going to shift. And the question is, are you prepared and did you invest in it? Ooh, hmm. that's really it. Yeah, it, well, and and most mo I would say most are not. Yeah. Right. Let's yeah. just be real. By the way, I had somebody tell me the other day what? I was given this exact sentiment and they were like, you sound angry about it. So oh. I'm like, yeah, I was like. No, I'm passionate. No, like, it's, yeah, it doesn't. I'm not like hammering people. I'm not like, screw you. You're stupid. Like, I'm just like. Like I'm trying to help yeah. someone that, yeah. that doesn't see the clear picture. I'm not angry about it. Like if you don't want to grow, like good for you. It's like stay comfortable. That's right. not, I'm not, it, when I'm a billionaire, which I will be one day. Love it. Not today. When I'm a billionaire, I might get into the, let me help people change the way they think. Mm. I'm in my phase in my life at 44 years old, I'm not there. I'm not there. Right now I'm at, you want to, you know you want to change, you know you want to grow, let's work together. Yep. I'm not in the change your mind business right now. So that's that's why I'm just like so direct with like, you could be doing more. Well, I mean, let's face it, Socrates himself, right? Growth and decay. Yeah. Either if you're not growing, you're, you're dying. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so like, I, I could not agree with you. Did I say that right? I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Where being around people that have purpose and growth is like, to me, probably objective number one. Yes. So I guess kind of going into like that 20, uh, you know, 20 deals and up or, you know, over a deal a month and up producer, right? Somebody that's gonna start going into where they need a system, yep. they need a process yep. to be able to have a predictable and duplicatable business. What are those key steps, right? Oh man, how long do we have? <laughs> well, you know, flyby version. My goodness, let me give you, yeah, let me give you, this is what, this is where I'm spending time with you guys. You know what it takes. Oh, yes. I mean, you guys have been in the nitty gritty with me, you know, and, and I imagine even at that, I mean, how long have we worked together? Four months, five months, feels like that. A few. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's like even then you guys it's like how much faster can we go there's so many little pieces to the business that we could work on and all of them are just micro tweaks you know think about spacex and the way the rocket lands the oh. amount of precision that's required great analogy across so many different aspects and so many different teams and mechanics and you know it's all just precision and timing you know so so if you think about what you could get into the question is this with business the question is this i mean with a spacex 
you, people's lives are at stake. Yep. You don't, you know, you don't, millions. It's a great analogy dollars. though. Actually, to, my mind just went super far with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you I think- mean, Elliot wants to be an astronaut. Oh, now we're going to build a of rocket, course. not Hell just Udilio. Yeah. There's right. Udilio rocket coming soon. Watch out, Bezos. <laughs> right. No, he's, for years, he's always said, we're going to the moon. He did a little rocket emoji. Oh, I like that. That's right. I like waiting. It's wow. like, that's like one of my stamps. It's yeah. a whole new po- <laughs> we'll, we'll go into a whole new podcast with this. Yes. The astronaut <laughs> podcast. But, but think about this. When you're new as an agent, what's going to create the biggest impact on revenue quickly? Mm. Yes, we can do all the things. Yes, all the things are important. I understand that. But what are three things we could do right now that are really going to drive impact on the revenue fastest? And so you guys are kind of in that place where, yes, you're, you're, you're clearly in a hustle to get things done, but you're in a place now where you're, you're in a different break point. So yep. like you can spend a little bit of time on some granular pieces yep. while, you know, I call it changing the tire while the wheel moves, while you're doing things that impact mm-hmm. on revenue. But you, you now know you're at that level where you gotta do both. And so that's, that's you know, honestly where it gets fun. But you know, some of the things you need to be thinking about are your core brand. Now, remember, when you're a new agent, your personal brand is more important than your corporate brand. Right now, there's equity in the name Zudilio. People know it, people hear it, they trust it, they use it, they leverage it, they drive revenue with it. So the brand Zudilio is at the stage where it it has equity in a marketplace. Mm -hmm. When you were brand new, you were the reason somebody bought. They didn't know who Mm -hmm. Zudilio was, they knew who you were and they trusted you. So that's how you drove conversions in your first, when you're a new agent, Look, I love that you got your business cards and it's <laughs> let's let's give a good what's a good real estate name? Let's do uh Su- Susie Sells. Susie Sells. <laughs> Which is good because it involves a personal brand. But let's say even you do like, you know, like uh sells sells machine something, you know, sells a matic, you know, like you came up with this brand, right? And you're trying you're new in the marketplace and you're like the sells matic team. Susie is with the sells matic team, you know. And, you're out there with like, I'm this brand and I own this company. No one knows who it is or what it is and you have no credibility in it. You really have to start, this would be the first piece, with your personal brand. You're gonna drive more conversions with your personal brand in the upfront. And then as you build that database, as you build the, infra- the infrastructure and the principles of your brand, then you can start to promote the equity and the credibility of what you as a person created in your marketplace. So I would say, you know, as you start to build out that brand, it gives you a little bit of time to think about what does it stand for? Mm -hmm. Why should your brand be important to somebody? Why would you have equity and credibility in a marketplace? And then ultimately, there's so many different real estate opportunities and so many different businesses and people that other people can do business with, why are you different? Mm -hmm. Why are you different? Because- A clear, unique value proposition. Yeah, a very clear, unique selling proposition, value proposition, differentiator, they call it a core differentiator, like what makes you completely different, you know? I like to use this example because I worked at Nike for two years, I was on the Nike running strategy team. And so they're very focused on the core athlete's belief in themselves, right? So Adidas, is more focused on cultural relevance. Yeah. They're, they're more focused on rap culture. They're more focused on communities, big soccer clubs. Yeah. But Nike wants you to get your butt out of the couch and into a stadium running stairs until you almost die because they believe in you more than you believe in you. And that's their differentiator is they believe in the individual athlete instead of like a big consumer group. You know, so, but think about that. As you look into a marketplace, what is it that makes you stand out, that makes you different from every other realtor because there's a lot of realtors out there. And they're all saying the same thing, right? By the way, I would hone in on the challenges that consumers had. The best data point is gonna come from consumers' bad experiences. So what is the number one complaint? Agents never get back to me. They Mm -hmm. say they're gonna do something and they don't. They agreed to this and then they didn't. You know, right. it's like communication is usually like one of the strongest value propositions mm-hmm. is like, how do I get better communication? Or, you know, what what is your process or system that you use that other agents don't use, which gives them more insight to the process or, you know, makes it easier for us to communicate through the process, you know? Am I tracking weird text messages or do I have it all organized? and some sort of communication organization process. You know, I don't know, what is it that you're gonna do differently that other agents aren't doing? I love it. This is such good stuff. 
I want to kind of shift. Let's go. Yeah. Because I know we got to, right, let's see. Let's do it. Yeah, we got to wrap it up Who here soon. Who is Buck as a baby? That's what we really want. <laughs> That's what I'm mean, right? No, <laughs> <Okay>. not really. <laughs> Who are you wearing? Is that so, what you want to know? Well, I want to know, skip, like... Did you skip crawling and just go right to walking? <laughs> I did. I ran when I was two. I feel like you did. You came out lifting weights. Not a chance. With those bright shoes on. Oh, you want to see? I call these the middle child. Let's, oh, I let's hear like them. I feel like they're on brand with Zudilio I colors. I so they're, right. they're, they're up there. Here like, they are. Here they are. Can we see it? <laughs> You got that? Good shot in focus. These are called the middle child Gucci's right here. Yeah. Uh, and I really am a middle child. It's like, look at me. Yeah, this is why I was attracted to TV and radio as a middle child. So cool. So Okay, huh. let's shift. Let's well, let's, shift. So I want to hear like, you know, you, you work with a ton of real yeah. estate professionals across the U.S. And I know that you're seeing some things you love. You're seeing some things you oh, hate. Yeah. You mentioned one of the things you hate already. But let's talk. Let's let's go positive first. What are maybe one or two things that you you see agents doing out there tactically that you love? And let's hear one or two th more things uh, that you just you cringe when you see. Yeah, I love an agent that is organized. Mm -hmm. I love an agent that is focused on the future. If you have the Google map of your career and your life, it's so much easier to get to a oh, destination. Clarity. You know, yeah, you yep. just gotta have clarity in an organization. I would say any great agent has that. They have a clear path. They understand exactly where they're at and where they're trying to go. And that way you can drive daily KPIs to know, because business does three things and you guys know this, you can scale, you can sustain, or you can slip. Scale, sustain, slip, scale, sustain, sustain slip. slip. That's it every day. So the question for you right now, what's your goal? What is that number? What is the annual number? Is it written down? Right? It's got to be done. Oh, I want to do 22, 28 deals. No, what's the number? How many deals? And then yep. what price range are those deals in? So then what's GCI? What are you going to take home? What's your commission take home? Right? What is the exact number? And is it how much percentage more than the year before, right? We want growth. We never want to be stagnant. We want to grow from the year before. So that if you know that number, then I can ask you this question today. Are you scaling, sustaining, or are you slipping? Mm. That's the question. And if you know that answer today, then you know how many more reels you should be doing, how many more times we should be going live. You should know I'm three clients behind for the quarter and where are they? Because they're there. You just didn't take enough action to find them yet. You know, that's it. So I'd say organization and clarity would be one of my favorite ones. Um, using technology the right way is another one. Um, Huge. You know, not being afraid of leveraging working smarter by automating the pieces you should automate and manually doing the pieces you shouldn't. So think of a big funnel, and like a literal funnel, and you've got potentially all kinds of buyers, sellers, investors, whatever you're doing, right? The idea is to automate the process at scale when there's thousands of people. But you're, I call it shaking the goal pan. You're leveraging all that automation to get that right target down to the point to where you can have a conversation with them manually and you yep. can qualify them. They call that MSL and they call that QSL and SQL. So like sales qualified lead, marketing qualified lead. So you automate the marketing qualified leads. So you, you automate those pieces where you don't have to do the heavy lifting. And then you get them on a phone conversation or an email or text message where you can actually have conversations with them. So leveraging technology is a good one. And then po keeping it positive and giving some immediate value. If you aren't leveraging, I know every agent's talking about like, what, are, like, you know, if you know, like, I love Glenda Baker, y'all. Oh, my star. She's so amazing. <laughs> One of the best TikTok real estate agents. Um, oh, yeah. Dear friend of mine who's obviously big in the Serhant network, but like, she's huge on TikTok. So, agency, I'm like, I need to be on TikTok. You know what nobody's watching right now? Go look up this guy. His name's Travis, and, and, and they're in Dallas. And so, this is this guy, he's doing YouTube right now. He's doing, uh, they, they've got, the, what is it? Uh, they're called uh, the Dallas team or something like that. I think that's their name. If you're not leveraging YouTube right now, that is a secret gem in real estate. You're right? not talking about Levi, are you? Levi Lassick, the yeah. real yeah. agent okay. so, uh, living yeah. in yeah. Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah we know so Levi. Yeah. Yeah. Levi, yeah, Levi's living a good dude. We, yeah. had, we had Levi on about yeah, he's, a year ago. Yeah. You did, yeah, he, yeah, a year ago. His rise was, has been awesome. And last year he was little. Yeah, he's yeah, it's, crushing, it's, I know. It's been rad to watch yep. his growth. So Lovely he tapped guy. into YouTube in a way most agents don't. Mm -hmm. yep. And I think agents 
just kind of overlook YouTube as like a place where they put up quirky videos. And yeah. He's using it as a search engine right now. His and strategies are brilliant. It's insane. Yeah. So if you're not kicking into YouTube, that's one of my favorite platforms. Uh, listen to Levi's story. Four months on YouTube. Four months on YouTube. Not a single deal. Three videos a week. Yep. Now, I tell he was clients relentless. right now, listen, I'm going to call some of my clients out. I love yeah. all of you. But I'll say three videos a week on YouTube. They come back to me three weeks later. Nothing happened. Fuck, I've been doing it. I just gave up. I'm not doing it. Look, I look, I love you. I love this. It's not working. Yeah. Levi went four months. Now he'll do a million GCI. No paid ads on YouTube. I know. No it's amazing. Paid ads. That's sick. Good job, Levi. Earned. He earned content and equity. So, okay, things I can't stand right yes, now. Yes, let's go one, there. People who give up after three weeks. Yes. Okay. I love all each and every one of you, but we we gotta go all in on this and we gotta give ourselves the commitment. Yep. Uh number two, um, when we create content not being clear on who the target is. Mm -hmm. So speaking oh, broadly. I, I struggle with that so much. Do you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I think we're easily programmed to say, you know, hey, you guys, hey, everyone, hey, yeah. all. The problem is when when the average person, because look, I did media for 15 years. So I, I got trained at a very young age to knock this off. Mm -hmm. And it transcends whether it's a podcast or cameras or Instagram, it transcends everywhere you go. People see the mic or they see these lenses and they're immediate. The reason people freeze is because they're thinking thousands of people are watching right. me right now. <laughs> when the truth is nobody is watching. Nobody's watching. One, <laughs> one person yeah. right now is either, by the way, we're deep into this podcast. If mm -hmm. you're still here, you over index. The average person sticks on a podcast 16 minutes. Hmm. If you're still here, that means you are a core persona. It means you're getting value out of this. It means you love this. It means you should follow me on Instagram about Buck. Uh huh. See, <laughs> see what we he did. We should be friends. It means you really care and that you're interested. So, so if 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 you're thinking of who's on the other side, it's always one person. It's already no one is no one said hey. You know what we're doing Friday night? Come on over, bring some pizza and beer. It's the Zudilio podcast party. <laughs> and we're all gonna listen. Nobody does, I mean, Nobody? they should. Really? We should have a Zudilio <laughs> podcast should. party. But you know, no, the agents, you know what yeah. they're doing right now? They're on a treadmill. Yep. They're listening. Oh, or right. driving. They're mm -hmm. driving. Yep. They're scanning Walking. on YouTube because they searched something and yep. this title popped up, yep. right? They're current clients trying to learn more about how yep. they can grow, right? So, yep. so, so, you know, you're, if you're watching this right now, think about it, you're alone. Same thing, when I watch Instagram, you know where I'm at? I'm usually in bed, I'm in mm. between meetings, probably in mm -hmm. the bathroom maybe sometimes. We, yep. we all take our phones in there, we right? Do. So, so, you know, you gotta think about, you're not talking to a mass audience, you're talking to one person. And when you do that, you just need to start speaking in all your content in a very personal way that connects with one individual. And so that would be the biggest thing. Is when That's you, a huge tip. Well, it's like this, you, how many of you have watched content where it's, hey everybody, I'm here. What's up sunny. guys? Yeah, and it's I, beautiful. I, yeah, it drives me nuts. And how are you feeling today? And it just feels so unauthentic, mm -hmm. you know? Like get to the value faster, understand you're speaking to one person. Uh, let's see, so that's pretty good for things that, are, that bug me right now. Yes, yes. Um, I would say the biggest thing though, that really bugs me is a high, like what we talked about earlier, a high performer that thinks they don't need a personal brand mm. because they've made mm. so many connections. That one, it's so sad to me because they have so much momentum. Do you know how many young agents would die to have your built-in reputation yeah. mm -hmm. so that then they could go on and invest in their personal brand? Like, why would you stop three feet from gold, Sharon mm. Lecter? Why would you stop, <laughs> and right? why, why would they? Why? Great book, by the way. It is a great book. Yeah, if you haven't read Three Feet from Gold, Sharon, who lives Sharon, here in Scottsdale, yeah. she's- I, she li Lechner lives here? Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah, she's got a farm out there. You can huh. you can actually go to Sharon Lecter's website. Sharon, I love you. If you're watching this, I'll send you this clip so you can give me love later online. But um, she has a ranch that you can go book time at. Like you can like stay at her oh. ranch. Yeah, it's really I, cool. News cool. to me. Here in Scottsdale. Three Feet from Gold? Three Feet, Three from, feet from Gold. From great gold. book. Sounds like it. Great book. It's a good one. But anyway, I hope that you receive some value out of our conversation. Yeah, so I guess like, kind of wrapping this up and you know taking this away is number one, content, right? My biggest thing, I know we touched on this last week is for all you prospectors, marketers, you know, whatnot out there, you know, obviously when you're marketing, 
that your message is potentially reading uh, or reaching a larger audience. Right. Prospecting a lot of times is a one off, whether you're knocking a door, picking up the phone and calling. Right. Now those are the highest return, which is why I you know believe in it and think that you need to yeah. do it. However, this right here has empowered us to scale, like Fast. you said before, yeah. you know, with your three S's, right? Scalable, yeah. right? in such a huge capacity. Yeah. So that to me is why I think that you're hearing all of the, you know, everybody that's crushing it in this, in these particular spaces is you leveraging, you know, the digital industry yes. to scale up and, and crush it. Yeah. So th there's that piece, yeah. um, doing it in a consistent way, looking at your business as a business, that's right. focusing on a niche thing yep. and talking individually. He took great notes. He did. This is, this is all mental too. Talking, uh, this. talking all, uh, in, individually. Yes. That's exactly Love it. it. I, I will say too, I know the internet is inundated with experts mm. saying, you, content, content, you gotta promote. What are you doing? You gotta get on there. And then people get on and they get frustrated. You do have to think about the fact, uh, and this goes with like Levi and Travis's story. They earned four months of time and content Right, so like you will not create success overnight. I want to put that out there. You are gonna crap. And we call it get it wrong to get it right, fail fast, whatever you want to call it. You need to develop those skills. By the way, develop them now while you have the time. Just get out and play. Like yes, there's a lot. Like yep. you heard a lot of notes. Like dang, I'm yep. supposed to do this. Just do it. Like even if you do it wrong, I'm gonna be happy that you at least are taking the action to do it. And then work slowly on the things that are gonna that are gonna be easiest for you to correct. You know, but like get out and do it and because it's going to take you months. Before yeah. You spe start getting speaking from personal experience and now we talk about it is 60 days before you even start seeing any results. Right. People right. like coming in, raising their hands doesn't mean you're going to convert them. Right. That's just, you know, getting into conversations. And then it's another 60 days after that yes. before you start seeing some conversions. That's so right. that's uh, 120 days. And four my months. job is to help you earn trust faster to mm -hmm. close the sales cycle quicker. Yep. And we can do that through content. Love it. That's it. Build awareness. Build I interest. love it too. So good. I'm gonna have to go back and like listen for myself to absorb more. But such a great session today. You can just call me and I'll just <laughs> run through it again. You yeah. know, I mean, I've, either way, more views. I guess that would be good. <laughs> well, thank you all for listening. We appreciate you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.